Hello everyone, welcome back to Walk With Me Gaming. Today, we are playing Britannic, Patroness of the Mediterranean. Now, I bought three games on the winter sale on Steam. I got Spiritfarer, I got Before Your Eyes, and I got this. Now, I wanted to play Before Your Eyes, but it is not working on Max, apparently, because everyone's having the same problems. So, I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna warn you, I have turned down all the settings to the absolute lowest, and this game still chugs. Um, I can't help it. There's not much that can be done about it. It's just gonna be slow. Now, what I'm playing is essentially a historical recreation of a ship. So the Britannic, uh, I'm not going to read you the whole history, but you can look it up yourself. Basically, it was supposed to be a luxury cruise, cruise liner in the same vein as the Titanic. Um, unfortunately, it never saw uh, uh, travel out into seas as the cruise liner and ended up being converted into a military ship eventually and then ended up being sunk. So another similar uh, sad fate of destruction. Um, this is what I would like to see in the future for games, because I would love to see this games being used as a medium. Okay, well, I'm just going to start anyway. Um, um, as a as a medium for for demonstration and for history, because um, they basically this team has rebuilt um, this ship. Uh, in its entirety so you can explore it in first person mode um, and basically explore all the major parts of the ship you can see the the like the main halls and uh, what some of the state rooms looked like and what the deck looks like now uh, as I said I'm gonna warn you that this is turned as low as it can go and it already it's gonna look bad and it will still be slow because this is an entire sh cruise ship um, but I really want this to become a popular thing. I want this to be a thing that happens more in games. When I found out this was a thing, I was like, this is brilliant because this is why I love walking simulators because the experience of going to a place that you can't normally get to and gain explore it. I think of games like Firewatch. I'm like, I'm, I have forests near me, but I'll never get to see what those ones like out west look like the the sparser land the drier climates like that differentiation between what i know and what i can get to and for this obviously i'm never going to step foot on a boat like this i've been on a cruise ship before it's different it's got some similarities even to the ship 100 years ago but i'll never see what's like on this ship and i think that this is a thing that eventually could someone recreate Rome and go explore ancient Rome like in in the same way and I would love for that to be a thing eventually um, so yeah so like I said the, everything's chugging on this and it's not much worse than it was before so that's good I was worried that the recording video would would be enough to push it over the edge that it wouldn't be even useful at all um, elevators it did have elevators a hundred years ago. Um, it had lights too. I don't know when electricity was invented. I didn't pay that much attention in history class, but if I had a game like this, I probably would have learned a lot more. <laughs> um, but it's just so neat. Like if you've ever been to like a historical site, um, like like an old mining town or a or a or a um, I don't know early American settlement or something like that. Um, you get to see these things. A glory clock. Um, I'm not going to read all the details on this because I more just want to show this as an example of things. Because it's like a museum uh, in the same way that it's going to have the details that pop up. And if you are able to play this game, you should play it for yourself. Um, I know the, the price is maybe a little steep for most people. I think it's like $15 or something like that. Uh, I did get it on sale. But it's still, you know, a lot for people to say, like, well, this is like a I'm paying for just to walk across this boat. But it's like, but yeah, because um, it's interesting and it's different and it's an experience like this is like walking through a museum specifically dedicated. Like 
imagine if if we had the resources to take uh, a ship like this and rebuild it it's like to scale and in reality obviously that's not an option we can't do that uh that would be crazy uh, the first classrooms we'll check that out in a moment um but in this way we are able to do that we're able to walk on this ship and get to experience this 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 work of grandeur and impressive technology at the time and we can see all these details that will never get to be seen because the ship sank like you will never be able to walk these surfaces but with the power of video games they made that an option and i just think that's absolutely brilliant um i think it's something that i want to see um i guess i can't go i thought I could interact to go in it. Ah, yes, touch this door. There we go. Uh, so we'll go to the first classrooms now. Um, but imagine building an entire city like this, like you know the way the way we have things like Firewatch or or um, you know you build these worlds, and most of the time people aren't focused on the worlds in games because they're just like. It's part of the challenge. You're running around gunning down enemies or or like jumping over platforms or whatever it is. But when you can translate a real world thing into reality, you can ex and you can explore it on that real state. Like imagine just even a regular museum, just like paintings and sculptures and stuff like that. And imagine not having to leave your house for it. And like right now, during the pandemic, this is this would be a prime time for things like this to exist. Like imagine being able to go to a museum from the comfort of your own home or imagine even even uh, uh, uh like a modern take where we don't have to dig into the depths of history to to find the information what if it's we built someone built a uh to scale replica of um the eiffel tower or the white house maybe not the white house that might be a little complicated by security measures but um i don't know like like other government buildings or or historical things that are like walking to the top of the statue of liberty not everyone can make it to new york you know not everyone has funds to travel not everyone has uh the ability to get to places new york's kind of tough to get in and when you're in a pandemic going to a big populated city probably not the best idea either um but just the idea of making that available to people who can never get, you know, imagine someone in a, in a hospital where they will never leave the hospital. They're too sick to leave, but they're not sick enough to die. They're just stuck in a hospital living out as good of a life as they can provide for them. And that feels really sad. Um, but uh, in that, oh, that's just going to bring us back to the grand staircase. I should have probably just loaded up another thing. But, um, you know, imagine those people being able to experience a world outside. Like, we get to see movies of places, but that's shot from a camera perspective that someone else chose. In this, you get to explore how you want. You get to see the areas. You get to see the spaces. You get to look at the details at your own leisure. And that's just, that's just something special. That's not something that everyone gets to experience, and you get to do this on your own, of, of your own will and your own abilities. And I just think that's really impressive. Um, I don't know. I mean, there there's a whole bunch of other like applications that this could be used for as well. Um, I think this is something, you know, imagine it like um, I know there's a game that makes like battle simulators where you can <laughs> like put two different armies of different numbers of people and different classes of, of creatures or whatever to battle each other. And it like, it gives a, an estimate of how they're going to interact. And that sounds kind of silly, but imagine if they set up a battle scenario of an actual war and you look at and go, and your teacher goes, okay, here's how it went. Here, here was the battle tactics that they used, and here's how um, the different sides approached the battle, and here's why this side won and this side didn't. And it's like, that would be kind of wild. Um, but uh, 
It's just it, it's just a different way to teach and a different way to learn. And I think with so many people who struggle with the the traditional approach to learning, I mean, I know for me, one of my toughest subjects was history. I could not focus on it at all. I didn't learn anything. And yet through the extra history videos on uh, the Extra Credits YouTube channel, I've learned significantly more than I ever did um, in any of my history classes. So I, you know, you could, you can translate this into the experience. I think people forget that a game, even if it doesn't have a challenge to it, like it can show you so much. Okay. This is the part that's going to be really slow moving because we're outside. And unfortunately, one of the factors of outside is water and it does move. So everything's going to be super chunky now. Uh, so apologies in advance for that. But, um, look at this like you can see the smokestacks you can see all the pipes like if you've ever been on a cruise ship and you see all these pieces it's it is wild to to see like all these huge mechanical parts um but to to see it from this perspective of knowing like this is something that existed a hundred years ago um it's just wild um and how they divided up the ship like here's all the the parts and stuff and they talk about um, the motors and the reels and everything that like held everything together. And um, we got here the boat deck reserved for second class. I don't know if that's like second. And and then you also realize like how big the ship really is too, because it's like wow, look at this thing. I'm like this is massive. Um, oh, move a little faster. No, nope. okay. Yeah, more second class. Okay, got it. What we've got there? Some kind of pressure valve. Oh, probably a fire thing. I'm not sure which end of the boat I'm going to. But, ah! <laughs> Lag. Uh, cargo hatch. And, uh, and this thing's cool, too, because it gives not only just descriptions of this boat specifically, but also, like details of how it compared to the Titanic and other huge ships of the time. Um, ventilation for the rooms below. Yeah, not not as easy to ventilate when you didn't have probably full air conditioning systems like you do now. And I can go up the stairs and everything with this, although again, uh, that's like I'm having to line it up perfectly. Can I get in a boat? Can I go up this ladder? Maybe. Oh, hey, I can. Can't do much with it, but, and now I appear to be trapped. That's fine. No, nope, that's fine. I got out. <laughs> um, all right, this move really slow, so I'm going to uh, continue touring the ship. Um, but let's go check it out from this perspective. Um, so... Let's do, let's see the, let's, let's see the staircase here. So this is, um, they, they designed the ship, uh, with both the, uh, the interior and exterior of both when it was a, meant to be a cruise liner and when it became a military ship. So you get the taste of like what this looked like in a different setting. Um, cause it was converted into a, uh, a hospital ship basically for um for injured soldiers during uh world war one so you see this this grand staircase now all the walls stripped away it's like literally down to the planks and then anything that's not being used to carry people is pretty much just storage of military supplies now like there's nothing fancy outside the paint isn't upkept like it's just enough um which is like crazy to see because you had these rooms uh in here this was the gymnasium and now it's just like an open space for officers and then all these is just storage of military supplies and it's wild to think that this would happen in times of war but this is this is what would happen especially then when you know resources and building ships i mean building ships now still takes a long time but then you add in the factors of having limited resources, especially being in war times. And the passenger quarters remained unchanged. 
And that's just where we kept all the sick people. Um, yeah, it's just a, just a kind of wild experience to see all this. And to know that this was, you know, based off of a real life thing that people could explore. And um, I know I've said it before, but again, just I want to see this implemented in other ways. Because I'd love to go see islands and and like cities and and places that i know i will probably never visit because that, that's probably things that are going to happen i'm not going to go explore the entire world i'd love to but um it's just not going to happen and no one gets to see everything so here's a chance for you to see at least a taste of it um i'm going to finish off with one more place um the boiler room because it's just cool um but I just wanted to show you guys what this was like and why I think a game like this is so important. Because um, I want this to be an experience that other people can see. Now, of course, this one's going to work a little bit better because, oh my gosh, it's so tight. Like, this whole area being so tight and it's just going down these horrible, these, these horrible ladders <laughs> that you're basically falling off. Um... can't go that way you know, like this whole thing is like claustrophobic as hell and people had to be down here shoveling coal Ugh, no thank you <laughs> no can't go that way there's a box in the way oh, but we can go down here and it getting caught on stuff lovely <sighs> yeah, I don't know what else there is to say on this one. It's just a, it's just a neat thing. Um, this is kind of cool. This wheelbarrow is still in the position of the wreck, prevents divers from going deeper in the ship. So, you know, it's it's funny to think that like these are things that like were found in the ship and like this was this was maintained under the ship's cargo holds, direct access between their quarters and the workspaces. Oh, okay. Oh, I can't go down there. Um, I could see the, this being, I mean, this is, this is one of those things that, like, I don't know if making the Titanic would be easier, because I feel like there's more history on it, but I don't know, maybe it's not, but I almost wish they had made the Titanic one, because I feel like more people would know the Titanic and be more interested in playing this game, but I don't know, either way, it's still a great idea, so, um, but that's really all I want to show you on this. Uh, I know this video is kind of different because this is even less gameplay than usual because it's not even a story. It's literally just an experience. But this is this is the kind of thing that I think walking simulators can really bring to the future of games where it's not just, you know, imagine combining something like this with like flight simulators or like fly to a city and then you get out and actually can walk around the city. like. I mean, we have things like Google Maps. We have images already. Like, we have a start. Um, and maybe it's weird to think of the idea of, like, everything being so invasive that they know everything about everywhere, but that's kind of close to what the world is now anyway. So, I don't know. I just think it's a neat idea. But that's, I think that's all I've gotten me for tonight. So, uh, if you like this video, uh, please tell me, because I'd love to do more interesting things like this uh, and if you don't there's plenty of other things for me to to play so um, check out my other videos as well so thank you all for watching I will see you guys next time bye